Hello, fellow truth seekers. I hope you are all doing well and staying safe. Um, so good news. This should be a really positive full moon. It is a full supermoon in Scorpio. And yes, it will be intense, but it's going to be intensely loving, intensely compassionate, intensely healing. So, <laughs> um, yeah, we're getting a reprieve. This happens at 3.45 a.m., and that's Pacific Standard Time. So, 3.45, right? We've been taking the steps. We've been doing the work and we're being rewarded. We're being rewarded with healing. This takes place at 17 degrees um, and that's Scorpio and Taurus, right? The sun is in Taurus, moon is in Scorpio. So once again, we're bringing it in Scorpio is the, you know, it's the death card, it's transformation. And Taurus is very earthy, right? So this is kind of that turning point, right? Three, four, five. Five is the change, right? We're finally kind of getting ready to move into that six, right? The harmony, the peace. You know, we're still at five. But we're getting this reprieve, this healing. And not only... Is it at 17 degrees, which is the star, of course, right? That healing. It's at 20 minutes of those signs. And that is the judgment card, right? Rebirth. And this is 2020. Yeah. Balance. And, you know, the really cool aspect that's happening with this is... Neptune is sextiling Mercury. Neptune is in Pisces. Once again, very healing energy, spiritual energy, right? These are the dreams. Um, this is the blue planet. You know, we've been talking about this blue flame love. And it's sextiling, which is a harmonious aspect. You know, the six, right? Mercury and Taurus. So it's like this loving, you know, this loving earth and, and sky, right? This, this has been coming up over and over again in the readings. This, you know, the earth meeting the sky. And this is that moment here. This is that rebirth that's happening. And so this, we've been seeing, you know, that level up. This might be where this is happening, right? This is that completion that passed through the other side, right? Coming back out of the cave. Um, yeah, that's what I'm seeing here. And Pluto is even sitting in Taurus as well. Pluto is the planet of transformation, of intensity, sitting at seven degrees, right? Once again, spirit and earth. So, yeah, you know... I feel like that's all I have to say today. I really do. Odd. <laughs> all right, we'll leave it there and we'll see what the cards have to say. Hello, my beautiful Pisceans, my beautiful deep divers. I hope that you are all doing well. So welcome back and welcome to any new people tuning in. My name is Christiana. I will be performing this reading for you today regarding the full moon in Scorpio. And it is going to be magical, guys. Like, this is the third super moon in a row. And it's in Scorpio, right? Which is magical all within itself. Those two things. Well, I was still kind of surprised as I've been going through these readings. I kept on, it was like I kept seeing things kind of magically happening. And I was like, 
I'm not sure what's going on here. It's like something is magically happening. <laughs> well, I finally, yesterday, watched the astrology report from my favorite astrologer, Rick Levine. And he uh, talked about this very rare occurrence that's happening with this full moon in Scorpio. And he mentioned that, and I'm going to link it down below and give a, a the, the time stamp on it. Of course, you know, you'll have to kind of find it yourself, but it's very interesting. And he ta he makes like this, um, there's four points of a five pointed star on it. And you know, what's that five, that fifth point is us, right? And spirit. It's like the universe is giving us all the tools that we need to manifest and to step into this new world and uh yeah it, it's coming together guys it's interesting all right so we'll see what magic is happening for you guys and i get a card regarding what chakra needs your most attention during this time frame Hmm. The soul star. This is, and I knew it. I knew it. Every time that comes out, there <laughs> it happens every time. Now it's so strange. And this has been going on. What it's, I think it started with the new moon in Taurus, maybe. So you know, this is the full moon that's coming with that. So we're still into the heavens using that uh, third eye. And it's been interesting this time. When I, every time that I get to the third eye feels different and I feel like we are getting like some upgrades some new abilities like because you see it all lit up here and all of this purple and of course we have the third eye at the as the underlying energy and this is the soul star this is your connect you know it's six inches above your head it's that connection to spirit to the cosmos Beautiful. And this always shows up when there is chaos around, right? And it's just that this chaos is actually the source of healing. Or a byproduct. Or both. All right, let's get your artist. My intention is that this artist will have messages for you outside of this reading as well. All right, beautiful, beautiful, okay. Ah, we have Filippo Marinetti at the bottom of the deck and he has been showing up since the beginning of the March readings and um, I finally figured it out. And we'll talk about it at the end. We um, go through the uh, underlying energies and see what story they have to tell. But I can say quickly that this is about the evolution of the masculine, who um, I feel is showing up as Marvin Gaye. This, you know, he's um, him and Diana Ross are counterparts. <laughs> All right. I'm going to figure out how I want to position everything in a minute. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'll be right back. So, wow, uh, these are really powerful energies, guys. You know, um, Janis Joplin, I get this, you know, for one, the colors are similar here. And we see all these swirls <clears throat> happening. And it's like that very amber, there's, there's, I don't know, there's like the softness. And I feel like it's like the energies that are surrounding you. And as you can see, like, both of these have the microphone, right? And with this swirly energy here, I feel like there's this connection, whether you, the, you and your counterpart are talking in person or if this is like you know just waves of energy right this this telepathic communication right or in dreams even there's definitely communication happening so if you're having dreams about them 
it's, you know, this is you and your counterpart connecting, right? And we see the stars here, which kind of make me feel like, you know, it's on the screen, like you're seeing them possibly in dreams. You know, it's depending on your situation, right? But an Edith Piaf here, this is so soft yet powerful, right? All that red, like her face just looks so soft and gentle. And, you know, Janis Joplin, her voice is like super powerful. And there's power and, you know, really like strong energy coming from this, you know, and it's very loving, right? It's full of love. It's really beautiful, these two. <clears throat> Then we have Marvin Gaye here, and, you know, I kept on hearing, ain't no mountain high enough, you know? <laughs> like, I feel like the masculine is really getting fired up and ready to do whatever it takes to get to his feminine. You know, and it says there is madness and love, but also reason and madness. And so there's still going to be that, you know, fear that maybe we're crazy, but no, we're not crazy. It's <laughs> there's reason, you know. All right, let's go ahead and get your main messages. We're going to go with the archetypes. <clears throat> Pisces, please. Looking for messages. Pisces. The full moon in Scorpio. Okay, that one definitely went the storm. Woo. <laughs> yeah, you know, these powerful energies, you know, they, this is the transformative stuff, so it isn't always comfortable, right? <laughs> but sometimes, oh, that is a lot. All right. The village is at the bottom. Let's see what we've got here. <clears throat> okay, the one came up again. The mentor, apocalypse, the seed, the one, the creator, the stone, the medallion, the eternal child. All right, guys, I'm going to get this stuff organized and I'll be back. All right, guys, so, um, wow. <laughs> it looks like you're discovering, like, the origin story, like, your very beginning, right? The truth of why you're here, you know, how it came into being with it, because all of these, up until this point, and I feel like this is like kind of a turning point. This is almost, you know, it, all of this leads up to this, but this is almost a separate energy. But, you know, the seed, the creator, pointing towards the past. So I feel like, you know, this is, you know, creation right the seed the beginning of it all the stone right our foundation the medallion has to do with inheritance um the eternal child in reverse you know once again being born right where you started the eternal child this is truth and we see mirror images and i feel like this is happening for your person too depending on how conscious they are you know the um will determine if they actually like yeah well i i kind of feel like it is very mutual right and we even have and i feel like this the one you know we have the village here at the bottom which is all and like even on this we see this like circle within the circle right 
And I feel like this is like, you know, a universe within another universe. And this is kind of like, you know, finding once again, your place in this. And when it gets to the one and the mentor looking towards apocalypse, apocalypsis, this is like a truth being revealed, right? Truth, truth. Um, this is something that was hidden and is still like, you know, it's very veiled. But we have the one looking at the mentor and it's like, I almost see this as, you know, this wisdom of the universe, right? of how it came into being and you know the oneness that we all share it's like and I almost see this as you know you and your person too and it's like we're all like this collective um this collective knowing and you all are becoming mentors to each other right and this veil is being lifted between you there's a sheltering here though right you know the way that this is it's like there's there's a cutoff this is you know only for those that are awake right that are seeing the truth wow and i'm going to keep this the story, you know, I don't really feel a whole lot of uh, need to go much further into it. <clears throat> yeah, I just think all of that had to come out to, you know, it was kind of a short story, but they <laughs> needed to give me all this information to make sure I, I, I got it. I figured it out. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, I also see, like, you know, this... In the storm, this is all very... Yeah, that's the beginning, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> and then the creator, which I, you know, I kind of feel like is all of us in a way, you know, brought, you know, brought all the, the disparate pieces together. Wow. Wow, it'd be that you and your person were like there because you're right, you know, it's like, wow, whoo, that's major, 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 Pisces. <laughs> you are the last sign in the zodiac, which means you've lived many, many, many lives. Okay, let's see what the tarot, oh, I had some decks donated to me very lovingly by one of my subscribers, and they were very modern decks, both of them, and, you know, they show, I feel like, it's like, you know, I've been drawn to other decks, you know, it's like, I don't know. I've been drawn to these. I've wanted these. These have been on my wish list, but um, it's like the magic, you know, that they showed up now. The magic is coming into our world. We're really entering into this magical time, this new world. I love it. Beautiful. Okay. So, Ten of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. And I feel like you know, this is supposed to go right here. It landed right beside it. <laughs> I'm going to go with it. Hmm. What? A reverse card. Let's see. Ace of Wands. I'm going to put it right here. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, this is definitely some inward journeying, right? We have the Hermit here going inward, transformation, and, you know, this in reverse, it's exploring these aspects of yourself, but I also feel like the one, you know, and look at this, the owl here right at the end, there's this 
and I even put this it right in the middle, right? This one side is you, one side is your person. That's what I'm picking up. Because, look, this is looking towards this, and these are looking towards this. And here at the end, with the King of Swords, we see all of these animals, right, that are very much connected to the other side. And he's looking towards the future. Hmm. You know, looking at this, um, I definitely, I feel like this is like that shared consciousness. And with, uh, I'm like, it ends in the reverse, right? This clear thinking, right? We've got this desire to move forward. We even have like, you know, uh, four wands, the four of wands here, right? Which is twin flame. And, you know, there's desire, there's the grounding energy here. The blue eyeshadow again, which, it, you know, speaking, but with, you know, their mouths are closed, right? And there's this celebration, there's this, you know, shaman-like with the, the drum, you know, it's, and the... the Raven is here. The owl is here. It's all very, I feel like it's almost, it's a dream, right? It's like you have this magnificent dream that you're both sharing. And it's going to transform you. It's going to give you like all of the insight. Wow. Okay. I'm like, for some reason I was, you know, after when I picked it up, there's peace here, right? The crown chakra, universal light. Uh, once again, that's that soul star chakra. Love underneath that. And I'm going to stop there. <laughs> but this, you know, talks about twin flame in this card. But you're, you know, the universe is connecting you to each other through your dreams. And I feel like there's going to be this very special, very real dream that you feel. And it's going to, don't doubt it, right? This is the apocalypse. This is the veil being lifted and you all being able to speak to each other. And the universe is, is providing you with information. Death and rebirth, right? This is your... Um, your story, I feel, you know, we see this, this is a very different kind of, and it's like, you know, this burst, the creation, right? The death and the rebirth. And yeah, I feel like this is your, your story that you all are going to receive. <clears throat> and, you know, that's what this whole thing is just about is this dream <laughs> but then the underlying oh and look at this it has this uh tree of life right which is about wisdom it's about the journey the magician mm -hmm. the world oh my god okay so Five of Wands, and I've been seeing this Five of Wands as just like this energy that's like mm, the five-pointed star, right? There's the Emperor. We're going to stop there, but yeah, this is like this magic portal, right? That's giving you a glimpse into this story that you all have this and this shared knowledge is going to give you knowledge that you can move forward with right to your ten of pentacles wow that's beautiful <laughs> I didn't even look to see that Everything was in here. Sorry, guys. Let me scooch this stuff over. We're going to get a piece of art. 
for you. We will get closing guidance. Yeah, that's better. And then we will take a look at the underlying energies. All right. All right, book. For Pisces, please. Go right here to the left. <laughs> the cradle. Oh my God. This is like the cradle, you know, this is where it all happened. The, the birth story, right? And this is that veil. You're going to be able to just like look in, see what happened. All right, that's it. I, that's what I'm seeing. Okay. <clears throat> and there's also that nurturing kind of aspect, right? <clears throat> I feel like, you know, you all are taking care of each other. Providing this <clears throat> warm energy that's just like surrounding you. It's beautiful. Okay. Closing guidance. Where are we going? Closing. Okay, I'm pulled to the fairies. <clears throat> Closing guidance for Pisces, please. Closing guidance for Pisces. Oh, that came out fast. Pona's wild daughter, and it came over and it like laid over this. Wow. And she's about healing. Yes. Honesty is at the bottom. We're going to read. <clears throat> I feel like this is healing to you, but it also is talking about what you all do. Even for the, your person. Look, we have an owl again. Oh my God. Okay, so the keywords are inner shadows, nightmare, depression, madness, growth. <laughs> madness again. <clears throat> In the bleakest part of the night, Dorka comes wearing her crown of fairy stars. She kneels on the ancient owl, bearer of the hidden wisdom of the night, and facing into the past with a clear, unflinching gaze. She holds us. We are held immobile, inwardly focused by her comforting yet implacable light-filled hands. She asks riddles that often seem impossible to answer at first, and yet she will not let us go until we find the solutions within ourselves. She is one of the great teachers of fairy, but her method of teaching makes Socrates' questions look like child's play. We must expect this of Dorka, because her lessons are about the shadow side of ourselves, the things we fear, our insecurities, self-doubts, and denials. She is a practitioner of tough love therapy. Dorka is the wild daughter of Epona, lady of the horse and the moon, and she takes us through the dark, hidden side of ourselves and into healing and fulfillment. From the temporary madness of rage, premenstrual tension, or great stress to the deeper and longer psychoses, she drives us on the journey through our internal hells. When we complete the journey, we are transfigured and transformed, transcending our old selves. We can never be frightened by that darkness again, whether our own or that of others. But until that journey is fully complete, we exist in a state of vulnerability which is where most of us are most of the time. Notice, please, that if she and that it is she and not her more gentle sister, Lasty, who wears the crown of stars, a mark of service, compassion, and great wisdom. Dorka's element is moonlight, the fifth element. Oh my God, the fifth element, guys. That fifth point of the star, which tempers and tests the spirit. 
Through her teaching, our conflicts and struggles become, as they are resolved, our greatest strengths. Wow. And I feel, you know, with this magic that's happening, you know, I feel like this is almost instantaneous. I mean, we've been working on it a while, right? But, <laughs> yeah, it's this exploration of the self. Beautiful. All right. Let's take a look at the underlying energies. Hmm. We've got honesty and underneath honesty is the maiden, which is a an auspicious new beginning, like, you know, innocence, right? Beautiful. Okay. Ten of Pentacles. The village, right? Those like go very closely together as well. Lipo Marinetti. And dreams. <clears throat> I definitely, I want to say once again, like, I don't feel like this is going to be really painful. I know you all have been doing the work, and I feel like, you know, this came out crossing it as kind of like, I feel like it's almost a reward. Like, it's a nod to the work you've done, you know, for others as well as yourself, and like, this is all very, yeah. I don't get a feeling like you all are going to be experiencing this painful journey again, because you've been there, right? <laughs> you've been there. And I mean, not that it, the whole way for, you know, well, who knows, who knows? I'm not gonna, there's always probably going to be pain, right? The only constant will always be contradiction here. <laughs> But, you know, with honesty here, too, sitting right above it, this, this heart healing that's happening, I feel. And, you know, we have the microphones. I feel like there's just, like, this, you know, truth that's being, you know, revealed about yourself, about your person. Um, yeah. And... So the futurists, this is, Filippo Marinetti was part of this futurist movement. And, you know, I kept, when I, as this has been coming out since March. And I've been like, oh, forward march. It's part of our, you know, march into the forward, into the future. And, but these futurists, part of their thing was misogyny. They were very misogynistic. And their the work is really interesting. It's taken from all different, like, you know, they they were very experimental. And I highly recommend just look up, like, the futurist art movement and look at some of these pictures. I mean, like, it's really interesting, truly. Um yeah, not just Filippo Marinetti himself, but, you know, I feel like it just represents that whole futurist uh, movement here. And I think we are moving into the future, and I think that the uh, emperor, right, is changing. Ah, we've got the Five of Pentacles on the other side of that, right? He's, he's changing. He's evolving, and um, that's part of this magic here. And, you know, he's being honest with himself. He's being honest about the future. And, you know, we're moving into, with new knowledge, right? We're moving into this new world and finding our new place in this new world. And we see, you know, it's not an easy climb, right? But there's beauty there. There's love, right? That pink and yellow and, yeah, I love it. I love it. All right, guys. That's all I have for you today. I hope that it resonated. I hope it helped. If so, please remember to like, subscribe, comment, share. Till next time, much love.